Hey, there you are. Here I am. Welcome to Jimmy's Records and Tapes. I'm Jimmy Pardo. Today we are talking about 1994. We've got it on vinyl, CD and cassette. We've got pop rock, heavy metal, punk, funk, rap, and new wave. All sales are final, but you never regret. All the music you get at Jimmy's Records and Tapes. Hi there, welcome to this week's Jimmy's Records and Tapes. Uh, Going to be talking about 1994 today. What was going on in the world? Well, Nancy Kerrigan got galoolied. What I mean by that is that uh, Tanya Harding's uh, husband or boyfriend, ex-husband, whatever he was at the time, I think they were married at the time, uh, he decided to help his uh, lady friend out and uh, he uh, hired a couple of goons to uh, whack Nancy Kerrigan in the knee and uh, we all had to hear why, why. And... Uh, it made the Olympics exciting again. It made me love the Olympics again. Los Angeles got hit with a 6.7 magnitude earthquake uh, that people didn't stop talking about until maybe just seconds ago. People still go, hey, were you here in 90? Got it. Earthquake. Got it. Now, listen, I wasn't here for that. I've been uh, involved in smaller earthquakes, and I, I kind of understand why they keep talking about it because uh, 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 they're scary as hell. Major League Baseball went on strike. Uh, the big thing in the news, of course, was that O.J. Simpson uh, was wrongly accused of things and, 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 and got in a Bronco and, and led people on a, uh, uh, some sort of a slow-speed chase. That was happening while I was on stage uh, at the uh, Penguins Comedy Club in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, where it was uh, obvious that I couldn't continue my show. So uh, I took the entire audience, uh, which lets you know how big of a draw I was back in 94, to go across the street and watch the entire race on the uh, TV in the bar at the hotel across the street from the club. So we did that. Uh, and then the big news, of course, from 94, uh, that I alluded to back in uh, last week's episode is I had a horrible breakup. A horrible breakup of 94. Shattered me to my core. Pinocchio style. Google it. What does your money get you in 1994? Well, gas is going to cost you a buck nine. A house is going to cost you 119050 bucks, And you can get yourself a Mighty Morphin Power Ranger costume for $18. So, trick or treat. Top TV shows, Seinfeld, ER, that stands for emergency room, and home improvement. And if you went to the motion picture house, you probably saw Forrest Gump, The Lion King, or Speed. Musically, because that's, that's the real reason we're here, the top selling song of the year was The Sign by Ace of Bass. And the top-selling album was Elton John's Lion King soundtrack. The Grammy Awards for giving out Best New Artist was uh, Sheryl Crow. And uh, the album for uh, the Grammy Award uh, went to uh, Tony Bennett's Unplugged. What teenager didn't rush out to the record store and go, Hey, the new Tony Bennett's out. Yeah, but I don't want that band nonsense. Right? Can we strip it down? This is the album for you. You finally get the Bennett LP you were looking for. The album we're going to be talking about today is Steve Perry's For the Love of Strange Medicine. Now, this is my favorite album of all time. We're finally there. We started this series in 1975. Here we are, what, 19 years later? Here it is, my favorite album. Uh, because, boy, this was not unlike a teddy bear to a child trying to sleep. This album got me through the aforementioned horrible breakup of 94, which I would imagine people are talking about as much as they did that earthquake. This went to number 15 on the Billboard chart. It was produced by James Barton along with Steve Perry. And Tim Minor produced uh, the song that he co-wrote along uh, with Steve called Missing You, which went to number 74 on the charts. And the single You Better Wait went to number 29. The thing is, though, this is not a singles album. This isn't Street Talk, Steve Perry's first solo album. This isn't a Journey album. This is a collection of songs of where Steve was at this time uh, of his life. The title track. The affirmation for the love of strange medicine is a haunting song. Donna, please, is uh, will break your heart, uh, especially if you're already in a fragile state of mind. Anyway, is a song that is kind of an olive branch to his, uh, at the time, former band Journey. They ended up getting back together in 1996 for uh, one album and then uh, never again, sadly. There was a B-side called What Was that is a beautiful song about him calling, actually, uh, he, uh, he gets a, he calls Sherry from the song, Oh Sherry. He calls her up uh, to kind of communicate, and she wants to get back together, and he 
doesn't. And then like, what was I to do? I never should have called you up is the first line. And again, when you're going through a breakup, man, this thing will shatter you. I had the opportunity many, many years later. I ran into Steve Perry at a Italian restaurant in Studio City, California, and I had the chance to tell him about how this album had such an impact in my life, and specifically that B-side, what was, how it just destroyed me. And the person he was with said, oh, I don't know that song, Steve. And Steve said, oh, yeah, you do. It's the one that goes, and he explains the history of how he wrote it. It was me, and I called Sherry, and I was like, oh, what was I doing? And he was like, what? what? And he starts singing the song, and he sings about 25% of the song outside of this Italian restaurant. Yes, there was another uh, other people around, but I took it that he was just serenading me. He was singing to me. Uh, anyway, that was uh, just, it doesn't get better than that in life. I've, I've, I'm very lucky. It's So at least I have a pleasant memory of that time in my life as opposed to just dwelling on the horrible breakup. Uh, that very time, where it happened was at the end of the summer and I had to go to Omaha, Nebraska to do a standing up comedy gig. And it happened the first day it fell on when we were moving out of our apartment, uh, my girlfriend at the time and I, and I had to turn my key in and then she was going to give it to the landlord. And so I turned my key in and uh, her name is Jennifer. There, I'll say it. And I turned, I gave her the key and I said, all right, I'll see you around, I guess. And then got in my car and popped this cassette in and cried for eight hours on a drive to Omaha listening to this song, probably stopping at every rest area to uh, uh, buy water so I could uh, rehydrate uh, because of the tears that are getting soaked into my upholstery. And I get to Omaha and I'm just, my shows aren't great. I'm in my head. I can't focus. I'm staying at a comedy condo. What that means is instead of giving you a hotel room, the comedy club, to save, I think, 15 cents, will rent an apartment and the other co- and the comics all have to stay there. And so you're dealing with whoever was there the week before. Maybe they were a heavy smoker. Now you got to deal with stale smoke for a week. Uh, maybe they had a dog or a cat. Now you got to deal with that nonsense. It's, it's the worst. You hear me, comedy club owners? It's the worst. Save your money elsewhere, right? Water down that liquor. Whatever you got to do, make the comics comfortable because we're your effing job. So, I'm in the condo, I'm depressed, I'm sad. I called my friend and fellow comedian, Graham Elwood, to cheer me up. And he's making me laugh and I'm appreciative of it. And I said, I just can't sit here in my own thoughts anymore, man. What should I do? And he said, and my nickname at the time was Shooter. He was like, Shooter, go see Forrest Gump, man. It's, it's the movie of the summer. People are loving Forrest Gump. Have you seen it? I said, I haven't seen it. Go see Forrest Gump. He goes, it'll take your mind off it. Go see Forrest Gump. Like, all right, I'll go see Forrest Gump. That'll that'll kill two hours. Uh, I'll invest in this movie. That'll take me out of my problems. And I even said to him, I said, I go, but there's nothing there about a breakup or anything that's going to remind me, right? I, I, the last thing I want to do is be reminded of Jennifer. I want to escape for those. You're good to go. This is a great movie. Yes, it's sad, but it's sad for different reasons. You're going to forget all about your pro- uh, problems with Jennifer. Uh, go go see that movie. So like, you got it. I hang up the phone. I get in my car. Uh, I go to the motion picture house. And within seconds, uh, he starts saying, uh, Forrest Gump, played by Tom Hanks, starts saying, Jenny, uh, 4,000 times. Now, Jenny, come on, Jenny. What happened to Jenny? I wish I was still with Jenny. Here comes Jenny. Look at Jenny. Jenny's eating. Jenny's driving. Jenny's wearing a hat. Look at Jenny. Come on. He says, Jenny, there's no reason sometimes for him to be saying it. And he says it. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Was Graham playing a prank on me? Why was this happening? Uh, the movie's great. Of course, it's great. I'm sobbing. I remember going out to my uh, to my car and uh, and sobbing and yelling at my steering wheel like, "What did I do? With, what have I done with my life?" And I then call at the time I had an eight hundred number to check my messages, and I and I dial in. I put the code in, and it's just Graham Elwood going, "Abort! Abort! Do not see Forrest Gump! Do not see Forrest Gump!" All right, it's time for this week's quick hit. It is "If I Only Knew" by Tom Jones. It comes off his. The Lead and How to Swing It album. Uh, I love Tom Jones. And what's there not to love? You know, I know you all, everybody like, oh, he's a Vegas performer and people throw their underpants. He's more than that. Do a deep dive. Uh, you're going to love him. More importantly, he's my favorite rapper of all time. Up north where the snow grows colder, I travel long way across the border. I looked up a girl that I watched do frozen. I found that I was chosen to be the follower of the day to make myself guess why they come to feet bargain from the body and soul. All the flames around go around me. I won't go into my old zone. I want to call up behind your backbone. I never licked one when I'm not wanted. I stay all haunted. Hey, brother, where you gonna go? Back in the world, I ran around and way down these walls.
Hey, thank you so much for watching this week's Jimmy's Records and Tapes. If you liked it, click the like button. Tell your buddies that whole thing, that whole kit and caboodle. I'm on Twitter at Jimmy Pardo. Also go to my website, jimmypardo.com, to check out uh, tour dates and uh, various videos and buy yourself some merch if that's what you're into. I also host the award-winning podcast, Never Not Funny. So if you like the nonsense you hear on this stuff, go check that out in a longer form with people interrupting me. Until then, the record's back in the sleeve. <laughs>